going on YouTube? Today's the day that we come out and play and say what I gotta say, you feel what I'm saying? It's pretty nice, pretty nice. Today guys, I wanna teach you how to go from this to this. What's good YouTube? It's your boy Tony D2 Wild checking in once again. Tony Digital bringing back another 4K visual. Back with another banger today, guys. On a video that I seem to feel like I need to do an update on. That's how to start a clothing line. Now, I've done two of these videos in the past. One is how to start a clothing line, and the other one was how to make a design go from a picture to a product. And both of them are, have done quite well, but there's been a lot of unanswered questions, a lot of further on questions and there's been a lot of new things that have been developed for me over the time from that video till now. I mean, that was like two part apartments ago and a lot of things have changed and a lot of new information has been put out and a lot of information I've learned myself and I wanted to share all the secrets, the tips and everything from the ins and outs with you guys today and want to sit down and break it down how to start a business from, from nothing to something, like from the beginnings to the end. We're going to do a trail, a storyline. Right here we got some of the newest items, you know, that will be coming out pretty soon from the Sample Industries construction drop that's coming out soon, which, uh, you know, I could put down below in the description and, uh, you know, show you're interested in that. But this is mainly about a clothing line just in general. If you wanted to start your own clothing line, this is the video that you need to tune into. One quick disclaimer, we're going to go ahead and get it out there now because it's a problem with anybody who just all of a sudden wakes up and wants to start their own line, the first thing they're gonna go on the internet and search is for a manufacturer or somebody to make the clothing. Or they wanna know, one of the biggest questions was everybody wanted to know who I use to make my clothes. You're not gonna get that answer from me nor from anyone else. You have to go and find your own source. But I'm gonna show you and I'm going to tell you where you can find that source. It's not a Google search term that you're gonna look for. You're not going to Google find me a clothing manufacturer, but I'm going to show you a website where you can find numerous suppliers and you can make your own from there. Okay, so without further ado, sit back, relax, enjoy some snacks, and let's get straight into it, man. Let's go. First things first, before any business is getting started, you usually want to get an LLC, an LP, or a corporation, an S corporation, whatever it may be. You really don't need to do this. This is more so optional very much in the beginning, but as time goes on and the you know, business starts to build, you're gonna wanna have some type of corporation behind it. With me and Christian with Sample Industries, we started off as an LP, a limited partnership, where we owned 50-50 of it. But later on, we transferred that over to an LLC because once you become an LLC, you know it kinda separates you, the person, from the business. When you're an LP, you and that other person own 50% and you guys are 50% responsible for everything that the business does. While as an LLC, you kind of have a little bit of limited liability. You have less of a responsibility. Basically, if someone was to sue sample, they couldn't come from my personal assets. They can come from the assets of the business. Whereas if it was a LP and somebody was to sue sample industries LP, they can come for whatever me and Bull got together, you know, 50-50. Come for personal assets, come for our house, come for you know, our bank accounts, where it's different with the business, like I said, they can come for only what the business owns asset-wise. Now, that holds only to a little bit. There is loopholes and ways that they can still do it, but it's just a little bit harder. That's the whole protection of an LLC. That's why a lot of times when people, business go out of stock, the owners, the CEOs, still are billionaires at the end of the day. That's why when people go bankrupt, you know, they're still billionaires because it's the company that's going bankrupt more so than as a person. And they still retain a lot of the money that they made from over the years. So doing that is very simple. Go to your local government website, you know, for me, georgiaga.gov, I think, and you can, you know, sign up and register for that. It's $100 for the file in, in, in Georgia for a business license. And I'm pretty sure it's the same anywhere else. Actually, when I first started my first business back in 2012, we spent like $200, $100 for the person and $100 a file. And you can do this yourself. It's very simple. Print the form out. You can do it on the internet, I believe. If not, you can just mail it in. It usually gets back pretty fast. I mean, probably like a week or two and you got your business. And that's something that's very optional, but you're going to need to do it down the line. Something else that's optional that can take its time is trademarking. And that's like trademarking logos and stuff. And that protects your logos from ever being replicated or being done by someone else. 
Trademarking is pretty important. It's a little bit more expensive. So you might not want to do that right off the rip. So first things first, once you do that with the business, you're gonna to wanna to find a name. You're gonna to wanna to find something very distinct. With me and Bull, we chose Sample Industries. Sample being something unique, one of a kind, one of one, not many out in production. Industries, something that were being produced. We wanted to put out samples. We wanted to produce samples. We wanted to be an industry of samples. So that's where we came up with the name. We wanted to put out limited pieces to the public and we wanted to be a production team behind it. So we called ourselves the Industries and that's what this, you know, the gear on the back, it's one of our logos, this is one of our logos. And we went with that and that's where we got our name from. We want to get a good distinct name that's going to hold weight, that's going to be very pop and give people a, a thought and be like, damn, that's nice. So that was very important. The name is probably by far the most important thing with any brand because it's going to dictate where or not someone wants to even go a step further. If your, you know, name is Billy Bob Johnson, they're not going to think about it, you know what I'm saying? But there's something more unique. I'm like, oh, that's a pretty cool name. Let me check them out. Once you get into that, then it goes into the meat and potatoes that everybody here in this video probably is trying to see, and that is their vendor. We call it a vendor, your manufacturer. You want to find out who's going to make the items. And sometimes, usually, when you're doing these, you might go through your typical Google website, like Custom Ink, to make a t-shirt, or you might find somebody in your local area as well, and that's all perfectly fine. Custom Ink, though, they kind of charge a lot. But one website, there's two websites I'm going to tell you to check out. One is Alibaba, and the other one is Taobao. Okay, those are two websites you want to check out. And what you're going to find on those websites are manufacturing companies, factories that do stuff in all sorts of things, from textiles to, to knives to pencils to t-shirts to pants, whatever. They got numerous different ones, different suppliers for all the above. This is a big keyhole. Like, yeah, you might find someone better at a different website or they might be those, might, people might say, come in the comments and say, that's all this bullshit people cheap. Like, hey, you gotta start somewhere. So you need to go and find yourself, manufacturer, look at the website, look what they make. They make all products they can design. If you you know design your own thing, they more than likely can make it for you. You could probably find someone in the States that do it as well but it may be a little bit more expensive. And that's something that we have slowly but surely been transitioning to do more stuff in the USA as well. But you gotta start somewhere, right? So once you find various people, you wanna talk to them, get to know them. You know, you're gonna have to be pretty good on foreign business because these people are from different countries, ranging from China, Bangladesh, India, Pakistan, um, Vietnam, all across the globe, you feel what I'm saying? Different manufacturers and stuff like that. And once you find some people you want to do, you know, your work with, you're going to want to order samples. Samples may range from a sample of item that they have on their website already. Maybe you want to make a bag. Maybe you want to make a shirt. You may need to order a one t-shirt from them, which may range from $80 to $100 to get that item in to your household to fill it. You might want to just feel like, okay, this is the type of shirt. Nah, I don't like this. This is too rough. It's too whatever. Or you may make a sample of the product that you want to make. So maybe you send them the design and they send over the item, how they made it, and you can check and see like this is the printing I want, this tag looks right, then you put the shirt on, the sizing of the arm is too small or the arms are too long or the waist is too wide. You know, you get a sample made and that's where you make your adjustments. And usually you can compare this to other brands. Maybe you go to Walmart, buy yourself a Hanes a hoodie or a Hanes shirt or one of your favorite brands, you might buy some Supreme, some 10 Deep, whatever, and you get the dimensions and you make sure they match up. You wanna make sure that the medium that you're trying to make is very similar to that of a Hanes shirt or a Supreme or a 10 Deep or uh, LV, whatever it is. That way that when your person buys it, it's not, they're not like, it's out of the ordinary. Cause back in the days when we first made stuff, we were making stuff and basically having to tell people to size up a lot. Cause you know, we were getting made in Pakistan or in, in China and you know, China, their sizing is different than ours. Their medium is like a small to us. That's just how it is for any country really. You know, the US we're pretty big people. We're some big ass people, we're obese. So we had to make sure that it all matched up. And at the time it was very small, but over time we, we had our vendors, we started sending them like Hanes shirts and, and 10 Deep shirts and Supreme shirts and I'm just using those brands. There's plenty of other BBC, all the above to get the fitting right because fitting is the number one thing here. But besides all that, you get your samples shipped to you. Sometimes you need one sample made. You might need two sample maids. For this one in particular, we had to get two sample maids. We had one sample made. We didn't like it. We had updated it. At first, this was a print. Then we got embroidery made and we wanted to make sure that the links and everything was right. Once the samples are correct and you got the product that you want, 
you go into production. Now the thing about production, as I stated in one of the previous videos, a lot of the times, about 100% of the time, when you want to make something, you're, they're gonna want you to make at least 100 of that, at least. You know, if you wanna make a shirt, you're not gonna be able to make 20 shirts. So if you're not in budget to making about 100 shirts of something, or even maybe you can get them down to 50, that's when you have to go to these other websites like Custom Inc. or find somebody local to do it because the webs, the, the people overseas, they're not gonna make 50 shirts because at the point in time, it's not even like a benefit for them. By the time they charge you on shipping and that, you're gonna be paying crazy amount of money. So they only like to work in bulk. And when you work in bulk, you get things for cheaper. And it's very, it's very beneficial, more than you think. You may sit here and be like, man, I only want 50 shirts, right? They'll charge you $2 per shirt. So 50 times two is $100. And I'm just, they're, more than likely, they're not gonna charge you two bucks for a shirt. They're gonna charge you more. Now, if it's a plain tee, you know, then maybe you can get it for like that. So let's just put this in, pers in perspective, all right? 50 shirts, man, I want 50 shirts. Oh, they'll be like, oh, sir, if you do 50 shirts, we're gonna have to charge you more. If you do 100 shirts, we can charge you less. You'll be like, oh, no, I want 50. They'll be like, okay, sir, well, we'll charge you $2 per shirt. You get 50 shirts, man, that's $100, right? 50 times two. If you were to do 100 shirts, they would have charged you $1 each. 50 times two, or 100 times one. Guess what? It equals the same amount, $100. So you would have been paying the same amount regardless of if you would have ordered more than less. So sometimes it's better to order more because you get more for your buck and you'll probably get the same amount. You'll pay the same amount of money and you'll get more. So just pay attention to that when you're dealing with that. And then next up, once you get the production made, say you can, you're able to afford the 100, 200, whatever the item is, every vendor is different. Some might do 30, some might do 50, some might do 100, some may, some may do 1,000. When we made our slippers, we had to make 3,000 pairs of slippers at the, at the bare minimum. So once you get that situated, you get it in production, you get it in hand, one thing's first and foremost, uh, hopefully by then you already created your website where you're gonna host your products at. There's various different websites you can use. Big Cartel is where we started. Now we're at Shopify. Shopify has somewhat been somewhat of the, I guess, the standard at this point. It's very easy. It's easy to sell. When you sell a product, it, it transfers easily over to other fulfillment centers and PayPal and bank cards. They can take credit card, PayPal, all the above. You want to make sure you have very easy, you know, a very easy way to sell your product as far as payment wise. You want to have the option of a PayPal, the credit card, um, that's pretty much it, PayPal and credit card, because you want to be able to make it easy for the consumer to make the purchase. Uh, so once you get your website set up, Big Cartel, like I said, or Shopify, that's the two I would recommend. The next up is just the shipping process. And when you do it through Shopify, the orders come through, you should be able to easily like set up where you can do PayPal and you know um, just print off the shipping labels. And I got to sneeze, so give me one second. So then once you get that situated when people make their orders you can print out the shipping labels uh tips here a couple tips i'll make sure probably to link down below some amazon products for me i would highly recommend i have a laser printer um that prints off labels you'll ne never need ink shout out to mike the compass who put me on they're called dymo dymo label printers basically you buy the rolls you never need ink because it prints it through fire or whatever right but you also go the easier route if you have a printer you can buy like these labels that you print and you just peel it and throw it on the label buy boxes buy poly bags to ship shirts in the little poly bags you wrap it up in the shipping process is fairly easy but there's going to become a point in time where you can't do it you know the very first three drops me and christian me and bull did all of our shipping ourselves, but we got to the point where we were spending more time shipping than making our next design. And that's when you had to look into fulfillment. Fulfillment is a company you would hire to ship off your items. For us, we have a fulfillment center in Pennsylvania. The fulfillment center, and they're all across the different places. Like there's one in Atlanta that I may need to eventually move over to Atlanta just so I can go and see my product. All of Sample's products are not even in Atlanta or in VA, they're in Pennsylvania. We uh, got that, we found them through our family, one of our family members over at Cousins Brand. And basically, whenever we get our shipments in of all our clothing, we get it shipped to the fulfillment center. And this will also 
relieve you guys of when you're starting that business up you're gonna get tons of boxes from wherever you're getting your stuff made from in your living room and you got to go through and sort and all that fulfillment sorts everything they store everything they ship everything for you so you don't have to have a house full of all these products that you're about to be making so once the order goes through they ship the very next day to the consumer and they you know invoice you each and every month you pay a service for the handling and for the shipping so you're gonna pay a separate invoice for what USPS, FedEx, UPS charges you, and then you're gonna pay them for the packaging and the handling. You know, packaging everything and then having to ship it. They're gonna charge you. Usually, you're probably gonna be paying one to two dollars per package plus whatever ships. So, if, say the shipping is five bucks, you're gonna pay them an additional two. So, the total of shipping is like seven bucks. But it ranges because, of course, you're gonna be shipping from the US, from the East Coast to West Coast. I mean, it's gonna be like 15, 20 bucks. So fulfillment will definitely pay it, play its part in your business down the road when you can't ship. It's just gonna be too much. Also, another big uh, time, a big time fulfillment center is Amazon. You know, Amazon does fulfillment as well. You can check them out. That's somebody I can tell you off rip, but just check out fulfillment. You can Google that and you can find some people in your area. There's tons of Georgia ones. Right now, I just kind of been stuck with them because they've been doing a really good job. They know how our business goes. They know how we work. And shipping, imagine me moving it to Atlanta. I'll have to ship all of Sample's product from Pennsylvania to Atlanta. That's a big just change in productions. And you're going to have to deal with things like these things called SKUs, which are these. SKUs. SKUs right here. Check it out. YCS2. That is a SKU. So in the system of our fulfillment center, if you type in YCS2, that shirt pops up. It's basically a language for the computer and the fulfillment system to just pick and pack things very easy. They don't look at, if somebody was to buy this vault shirt, they're not gonna look at this vault shirt, they're gonna look at the YCS. And well, I just, on the shirt, do not remove this tag. This tag must be visible on product, sample, quality check, pre-shrunk, inspection. And these are all little, you know, little gimmicks and stuff that you can add on through, um, you know, later on through your vendor. They can do tags, they can do all that. You get all that through your production and your sampling of the pieces. So I basically broke it down to you guys a lot of the way, you know, getting the business license, getting the, the uh, trademark, getting the vendors, getting the sample made, the production made, then you get your website, then you sell it, and then you ship it to the consumer, and you go from there. One of the most important things above all is customer service and being able to talk with your customer and making sure they are happy, as happy as possible, but making sure at the same time you are not, you know, losing out on money. So you need to make sure you're very transparent with them, whether it's putting out sizing charts on your website and uh, just doing things the best way as possible. You know, when we first started, we did a lot of time all sales final you know we didn't allow exchanges unless this product was damaged because it was like very hard to make a profit if people were just constantly we had to constantly deal with people coming in and out in and out but we didn't really deal with that many customer problems and we usually deal with customer problems on a per, on a customer to customer basis sizing at this point has not been a problem but if there's a customer gets something that's stained or something like that or damaged or cut refund them if they want to exchange if they want a new product we'll send it out to them asap rocky but as far as sizing try to keep it as transparent try to get sizing charts made that way the customer before they even purchase it they can do measurements themselves and if you know that way it's as transparent as possible and that way you're not losing out on money and lastly but not least sales tax yes sales tax is a big thing now once you get very, very well established in your, in, your, in, your, in your business, you're gonna have to start paying attention to sales tax and this thing called Nexus. Nexus is basically stating if your business has any type of connections to any type of state, you're gonna have to file sales tax in. So for instance, the business is being operated in, it was started in Georgia. Bull is a part of the business. He lives in VA. Our fulfillment center is stationed in Pennsylvania. So our nexus and our sales tax have to go to, to Pennsylvania, VA, and Georgia. So each and every month, well now it's on a quarterly. We gotta change from monthly to quarterly. When you start off, it'll probably be monthly. But each and every quarter, we have to pay sales tax. So what happens is people who buy from us in Georgia, Pennsylvania, and VA will have to pay a sales tax. 
if you buy from us in California, you don't have to pay taxes. If you ever may, you may notice sometimes when you buy stuff on Amazon, buy stuff on a website, you might not have to, pay, have to pay sales tax. Sometimes you may have to pay sales tax. And usually the difference there is that the product has some type of nexus in that state that you live in. So make sure you stay on top of that with sales tax. You're gonna get your sales, you can charge, you know, you charge that through the payment through the customer and you pay the sales tax off and you're good to go. But make sure you take care of that because you don't want to have any problems with Uncle Sam down the road, but sales tax is something that you have to take care of fairly fast when selling products or clothing. And that pretty much sums it up, man. Me and Bull, we started our company off the basis of $300 each, 600 total. We started it off there and uh, we went through, found a lot of different vendors. We found a vendor that was willing to work with us, willing to build with us. So you could probably do the same, you know, just got to be all about the talk. Got to be about your business at the end of the day and go from there. I think I pretty much answered though every goddamn question and I was pretty transparent and you're not going to find many people who are willing to tell you every single thing to do. You feel what I'm saying? Um, and some people are very grateful for that. Some people are going to still find a problem. Some people are going to be still wanting to know my particular vendor, but at the end of the day, I have multiple vendors. I'm not going to give out my vendor you get something done and say they fuck up on your shit. Guess what? I'm not gonna be, I don't want you coming back to me saying, yo, this dude is scamming or this dude per took me to this person and they ran off of my money or they did, I don't know what the person can do. So let this, find your own vendors, but make sure you are very, very, very smart about it. Don't do stuff that like West uh, Western Union and stuff right off the back. Make sure you build a trust with your vendor whether you got to go through the Alibaba website to pay them or you do uh, PayPal, all different vendors are different. So make sure that you guys are on your P's and Q's and then you one day you can, you know, pop it off from there. Hey, you might not think my stuff is cool, some of you guys, but it's not about that. At the end of the day, it's about me helping you get to your own brand so that you can become somebody one day. And one thing about this, it ain't going to be overnight. We've been doing this for five years and we're still not the biggest. We're not, we, we still a pee in the pot. We got to take time. It's going to take time. And this isn't something that you wake up and want to do. This is something that you got to be determined to do. So if you just woke up, if you just right now wanted to design a clothing line in the past couple months, you need to take your time and, and do some research as always stated, because if you're trying to hop in this shit so fast, you're not going to be doing it within a year. You're not. So make sure you guys, Take your time, do your research, know this is a process. This is not an overnight thing. We've been doing it for five years and we're still growing and we're still had ups and downs everywhere so far. You know what I'm saying? There's you're, any brand out there, Supreme, they started in 1995. 10 Deep started in, I don't know when they started, but these a lot of these brands, they, they, they didn't just start. They've been doing this shit for 10 years. So just know if you ain't got 10 years worth of your time or five years worth of your time, you already on the decline. You feel me? So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you slap a like, comment down below, subscribe to the channel if you're new. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope I gave you as much information as possible this time. I didn't miss anything out. I, I think I, I think I just gave you some jewels. A lot of this stuff is on the internet too. It may be, and if it is, then go find more information on the internet. Anyways, this video is on the internet, so yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. It's your boy, Tony D2Wild. I'm checking in. I'm checking out. I love you guys. I'm out. Peace.